Hi guys, today we're unboxing, setting up and giving a test of the new Chromecast with Google TV. This is the latest Chromecast from Google. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Price-wise, it retails for $59.99, but there's two offerings on this. You can also buy it with a Netflix bundle on there. So that retails for $89.99. So the way that works, once you've registered the device, you do get a credit of $53.94 for Netflix. So an offer to keep in mind when you're purchasing this. The device itself comes in three colors. So Snow, which is the one I've got, Sunrise, and Sky. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. So opening it up, you've got a tag here. If I pull that off and we open that up, Chromecast in there, nice compact size to it. You can see the G logo for Google on there, HDMI connector on there, and coming around the back, you've got a button here and an LED indicator. Looking around the side, there's a type C power connection point and nothing more. In terms of dimensions, it's 7.2 centimeters by 6.1 centimeters, 1.2 centimeters thick. Length on this end to end is 16.2. So really compact in size. Next, we've got the remote it looks like. And if we open that up, very nice and compact in size. You've got the control option there to navigate. Looks like a microphone point there. You've got the Google Assistant. Coming around the side, you've got a volume rocker there so you can increase and decrease the volume. The remote itself is a Bluetooth remote, but if you look on the top there, you've got an infrared control other infrared devices on there. In terms of batteries, it takes two AAA batteries. Let's get started. So some details on getting set up with this. Then we've got a power cable. The length on this cable is one and a half meters. Build quality feels good. Nice, thick, chunky cable. It's USB to Type-C connection. Next, we've got two batteries and the power brick and the output on this is 5 volts, 1.5 amps. The nearest competitor to this device is probably the Amazon Fire Stick. And just a comparison between the two devices, you can see the remote on the Google one is much smaller, whereas the actual streaming device is slightly larger, but not as tall as the Fire Stick. Connecting this up is very easy. On the back, you've got a Type-C connector, as I've already shown. You plug in the cable into there. The other end, which is a USB connection point, that can be plugged into the power brick, or if your TV has a USB connection point, you just plug it into there, and it should be sufficient to power it. Then the HDMI connector on the Chromecast gets plugged into your HDMI connector. And that's it, you're ready to go. This is what you're initially presented with. And first of all, we need to pair the remote. So it says, press this button. There you go, that's selected. So now we can just go for the menu options. We'll select English, United Kingdom. Next thing we've been asked is to set up with the Google Home app. Now this is the quickest method to get this up and running. If you weren't gonna use that, then you'd have to go via on-screen options using your remote. So now coming over to my Android phone, if I click on the Home app, You've got two methods of setting it up. So you can see over here, set up Chromecast, or if I go to the plus, set up device, set up new devices in your home. Both methods are identical. So we'll just go via this one. Choose your home next to that. Turn on Bluetooth. Now it needs to scan in the QR code on the screen. Now it's connected. We just need to agree to the terms of service. This Chromecast was manufactured for a different country and may not be compatible with your Wi-Fi network. So I'll just click proceed with that. Where is this device? I'll click studio next to that. Next, we need to select our Wi-Fi network to connect to. So I'll go for my test one over here next to that. Where is this device? So we'll click studio next to that. Sign in with your Google account. So this will give a more personalized experience. So continue to that. Now it needs to verify it's me next to that. So now a system update has been applied and we can continue setup. So it's saying use Chromecast location. We'll leave that. Help improve Chromecast, send diagnostics to Google. We'll turn that off and accept the terms. Google Assistant, find shows, movies, music, show me family movies, continue to that. Search across all your TV apps, allow to that. Activate voice match on this device and this will allow it to recognize your voice and tell it apart from others. I'll click next to that. Agree to voice match. Saving audio is your choice, so I'm gonna say not now. Get personal results with your voice. I'll agree to that one. Okay, so now looking on the interface, we can select the services we wanna use. So iPlayer's there, we'll confirm that. 
Next, we've got control volume and power with your Chromecast remote. So we can set it up to control our TV. So I'll say set up remote, TV, LG, next to that. I've just tried adjusting the volume. It seems to be working fine. So we'll say yes to this option. Next, we need to set up the power button next to that. Power button didn't work. So let me click no, try again. Yep, that worked now. Turn it back on again. Select yes to that. Your Chromecast remote is set up next to that. It's just installing apps now. So there you go, now we're getting a message saying your Chromecast with Google TV is ready and we can select start exploring. So now the device is set up, this is what you're initially presented with. In terms of interface, it varies slightly from a standard Android TV box. So this is the Google TV interface on here, looking at the options you have available. Initially, you've got search at the top, coming across, you've got for you. And if I select that, you can see a lot of recommended items here. And performance wise, it's not too bad. The device itself has two gig of RAM in there and a quad core 1.9 gigahertz processor. Coming down below, you can get better recommendations down here. And here's where you can amend the services that's been recommended to you. Now coming back from here, going back up, you can see for yourself, not sluggish in any way. I thought it might be sluggish, not at all in any way. Interestingly enough, on Google's website, there's no details or spec on this. Now, if you compare it to many other Android TV boxes on the market, spec-wise, it's not extremely high in any way. And I guess they're trying to avoid showing people that in case it puts them off purchasing it. Coming back up to the top, and obviously with these recommendations, as you're viewing different things, those recommendations will be changing accordingly. Coming across, then you can see movies. So they're the all the different services you've got and the movies via that. Then you've got shows and then apps. And coming down into apps, search for apps. So you can install via here and coming down just to show that's what you have on there. Coming back up again, then you've got library. So this is items you've already purchased, so you can see them there. Coming across, then you've got your profile here, and then looking below, you've got settings, you've got the standard stuff, Wi-Fi details there, accounts and sign-in, so you can add in more accounts in there. You've got privacy, display and sound going in there. HDMI, CEC, you can actually control other devices, turning them on and off via just this device. Advanced display settings, so there's an allow game mode option on there and resolution wise, you're seeing 1080p on this at the moment. I will show it on a TV, but I'm doing a capture on here so you can see the picture really clearly. So it's coming in at 1080p 60 Hertz. Advanced sound settings coming across on here. It's set to automatically use device supported formats, but you can set it manually as well. Looking down here, Dolby Atmos in Dolby Digital Plus, ACC Dolby Digital, and Dolby Digital Plus. So the latest sound format supported there. Coming back from here, you can see the apps you've got on there, standard stuff. System-wise, going into about, if I scroll down, you can see Android TV OS version is 10. Coming back from there, storage-wise, you can see for yourself 4.4 gigabytes in total. Ambient mode, so if I click on that, so this is like the Chromecast options you have. So with Chromecast, when it's going for a slideshow or an art gallery, this is where you can get that started up. So if I click start now, there you go, it's gone into ambient mode. So now if I click home, for instance, it'll go back to the options you were on before. And if I click home again, comes back to the start bit for you. So now if I click back from here, there you go, it goes into ambient mode. So this is what you'd see if you own a Chromecast and you initially turned it on, it's ready to cast to it. So next, just to show casting with the device, I'm at my Android phone and if I pick one of my videos from my travels channel and coming on here, I hit the cast button, pick Studio TV, give it a moment, there you go, it's connected and it's playing. So it's simple as that, works just like any other Chromecast. This device actually supports dual band Wi-Fi. So you've got 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, and it's best to connect to the five gigahertz Wi-Fi to get optimal performance on this. You can see there by the current resolution, you've got 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. And you can see for yourself, doesn't struggle in any way, no buffering or anything. I've had a little play around as well. And streaming wise on YouTube, it works really well. Picture quality obviously you're seeing is at 1080p on there only because I'm capturing this in the background so you can see the picture 
better quality. There you go, it works well with YouTube. Next, just to show how to install an app on here. So if I go to apps, we go down there, app categories, so you've got the different categories there, or you could just go straight for search for apps, and you can just type in the name or use voice control. So I'll just type in here using the remote, search for that, the DNLA, so I've got a DNLA server on my network. I click on that and hit install. And it's simple as that. Okay, we'll open that. So it's searching for DNLA devices on my network. And there you go, it's found my DNLA server. Okay, so if I play this video now from my NAS server, and this is a 4K video recorded at 60 frames per second. You can see for yourself, runs really well. And now if I come over here, just to give some video information while it's running, There you go, no issues at all, works really smoothly. And again, to note, it's on five gigahertz Wi-Fi. Picture quality is great as well. Next, just to show the gaming side of things, if I come along the menu options, go to settings, scroll down to remotes and accessories, you can see the Chromecast remote on here. So obviously that's Bluetooth. To pair in a gaming controller, so I've got my PS4 controller here. If I go to pair remote or accessory, and with this, all I need to do is hold on to the PlayStation and share buttons until the light here rapidly starts blinking. There you go. And now if we give it a moment, it's appeared in the list and we'll just select it for pairing. There you go, click pair and it's paired, as simple as that. This is how you do it on most Android TV boxes anyway. So now if we come back from here, go to apps. So there you go, it's paired with the controller now and responsive wise, seems nice and responsive. See for yourself. Next, just to test out with Real Racing 3. You can see for yourself, performance is really good. Graphics wise, doesn't struggle in any way. And again, I'm surprised for two gig of RAM in here, it's performing really well. Very responsive as well. Next, just to demonstrate voice control on there, for it to work, you need to hold on to the button. So if I hold on and give a command, turn off Nano Leaf. There you go, turn on Nano Leaf. What's the weather like in New York today? There you go, works really well. Performance seems quite quick with it. And I like the fact you've got the privacy on here, only initiates when you press the button. In terms of Bluetooth connectivity, not just limited to pairing up wireless gaming controllers with it, you can also pair up speakers. So this is my Zembri Z8 speaker here and headphones as well. You can pair up headphones, which is quite cool because if you're watching something, it was late in the evening, you didn't want to have the speakers on on your TV, you could just pair up your headset on there and it can work wirelessly. So how cool is that? And you're not limited to this any Bluetooth device should be able to pair with this. So here's an interesting bit of functionality. So if we go to remotes and accessories, and you've already seen how to pair up Bluetooth devices, if I carry on going down, you've got set up remote buttons. So going in there, you can see the LG TV I've already added in, and these are the controls you've got in there. Now, if I go to add device, they're the options we have. So TV, soundbar, and AV receiver. So if I go to AV receiver, select my brand of AV receiver, so Somi, go to power. And now if I press the power button on the remote, there you go, it's turned on. So you can add in your AV controls onto there as well. So power and volume. It's a really useful functionality here, the fact you can do that. So no messing around, picking up another remote. And what you're mostly doing anyway is turning it on and changing volume. So perfect bit of functionality available on here to allow you to control another device. Now, once you've added in the controls for your AV receiver, what happens then, it changes what the button does. So you can see there, volume control is now the AV receiver and power button is the AV receiver. And if I go into there, I can flip it back to being just the TV if I wanted. So you can only control one device at a time, which makes sense really. You've got a button there for volume, for instance, you can't mess around having the TV changing in volume and the AV receiver as well, which would be nuts. But you can see for yourself, if I move it just in the distance, you can see the red light on the AV receiver moving and that's the volume control on there. So that's working and working really well. So you can flip between them, you can change them if you wanted. So if you had more devices, obviously if you had a sound bar, I don't know why you'd have a sound bar and an AV receiver together with your TV, but you can flip between them, which is some good functionality I've not seen on other devices before. Now, if you had cameras which were compatible with the Google Home and you've added them in, you can view those 
on this device as well. So if I do show porch camera. All right, streaming the porch camera on Studio TV. There you go. How cool is that? So streaming at the moment, let's go over to the display. There is a bit of lag on there. I've shown other cameras. Most cameras have a subtle delay on them. Some are really bad, up to a minute, but the better ones, you can get about a five second lag on there. So it's not too bad when you get a camera that's like that. But there you go, you can see for yourself, works pretty well. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show was the fact that you can actually control the Google TV device with your other Google Home devices. So I've got my Google Home Mini over here, and this is just like the functionality you'd get with the Chromecast. So if I now say, on Studio TV, cast YouTube Geek Street. Sure, playing Geek Street from YouTube on Studio TV. There you go, how cool is that? Voice control to play something. Okay, so as well as that, I can say, pause Studio TV. Forward Studio TV two minutes. And there you go, it's forwarded on two minutes. Play Studio TV. Rewind Studio TV, four minutes, 20 seconds. There you go, how cool is that? Voice control available to control when you've got things running on there. So just like the Chromecast, the functionality is identical. Another thing worth mentioning, so in the actual interface itself, if I come across, you can see your account added in there. So you can see if I select it now, and we go into account settings, there's some interesting options available. So you can see your account there. So you can only have one account associated with the Google TV side of things. You can add other accounts, but like it says over here in the corner, you won't see any recommendations for that particular account. Now, if I click on my normal account and looking over here, you've got settings lock. So this will protect any settings you've got set up on there. And to change this, you have to authenticate. So this is good if you've got young kids and you didn't want them to mess around changing the settings on there. The next coming down from here, your services. So you can change the services you've got selected on here. Then you've got payment and purchases another good option to have. So if a purchase is made, you have to authenticate each time. Again, if you've got kids, you, don't, you can ensure they don't accidentally purchase something. Coming back from there, Google Assistant as well. You've got additional options here. So safe search filters, you can block offensive words, and you can turn off personal results if you wanted to as well. Now coming back from there, going down to app only mode, so this is an interesting one. So from your home screen, it will remove all the recommendations and you'll end up with just the apps visible on there. And that's it. So let me turn that on just to show you what it's like. We'll continue to that. And then finally, you've got a remove option. So now if I go into home and there you go, just a more simplistic view, nothing's recommended. You can just see all the apps you've got installed on there and an easy way to go straight in there. So I think that's a good option to have if you don't want to see all these recommendations hitting you all the time, you just want it as simplistic as possible. Just go in there, select what you want to watch. This is a great option to have turned on. Now here's an interesting idea to mention. So if you had a docking station like this with a Type-C connector, it's got a number of ports on there. You can see there's an Ethernet port, card reader there, two USB ports. You could just plug in the Type-C port to connect to the Chromecast. And then on here, you've got power delivery just via here. So you just power it from here. And then you've got a wired connection on your Chromecast. You also got the expansion slot so you can plug in hard disks or pen drives to access data off there and any other sort of USB devices to interact with it. So for instance, if you did have Wi-Fi issues and you preferred a wired connection, like I do, I do prefer wired connections, not too keen on Wi-Fi a lot of the times. This is the ideal option to go for. So I'll include a link for this and I'll show you it working as well. So here's how it looks all connected up. You can see the Chromecast here and Ethernet going in there and the power through there. And with the pen drives, you can just plug them directly in to the USB ports. So now I've powered up the device with the Type-C hub connected to it. And just to show, coming over here, going to settings, and there you have it, ethernet connected. So it's a wired connection now. And now going to system, storage, 
You can see there from the removable drive on there, you've got 22 gig on one partition on there and on the other one you've got 10 gig. Now coming back, going to home, if I go to my apps and I start up VLC and now if I go to browsing, so there's a removable storage here. So the removable storage is visible here. Going in there, you can see one of the files on there. I'll hit play and there you go. You've got a video playing directly from the storage. It's a cool bit of functionality, you can do that. And I do like having the idea of having a hub connected to it only because you have the possibility of having a wired connection on there and you can plug in other devices if you wanted to. So you're not limited in any way. So definitely worth considering to buy one if you're gonna get this device. Now just to quickly mention about the remote, I've already shown, so obviously navigation options are here, you can see in the background it's moving, selections just over there, and then you've got the back button, Google Assistant's here, you've got to hold on to it and then speak into the microphone area here. You can speak at a distance, no issues there. Then you've got the home button, so if you're in an app, just click that, it'll come back again. Mute, so this will mute the TV or you can reassign it to the actual Chromecast with Google TV. And then you've got your shortcut to YouTube. If I click there, you can see YouTube starts up. Then you've got Netflix shortcut there. And then a power button. So again, this can be associated with the TV or the device itself. So you can turn off the device from here. Then coming over here, you've got the source button. So if I press that, you can see the action on there, the source appears and you can change over to a different source. And also just to show volume control as well. So you can do volume control on the TV or on the Chromecast. So good bit of functionality from this nice compact remote. So now just to show directly running on the TV. TV is a 4K TV and the Chromecast running at 4K 60 frames per second. Running YouTube, no buffering, doesn't struggle in any way, no frames dropped on there either, and working really well, you can see for yourself. Next, just to show display resolution, I plugged it into a 4K OLED TV and it's picked up the resolution as being 4K 60 hertz. Click along, there the resolutions available on there. Goes down to 24 hertz if you wanted to go that low and you can see the lowest resolution there. So there you go, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this Chromecast with Google TV built in. A bit of a break from the norm, from a normal TV box. Functionality wise, it's geared totally to the viewing experience. All your apps there, easy access on there. You can do some basic gaming on there, nice Bluetooth functionality, you can pair up other Bluetooth devices on there. I do like the remote that comes with it. It can integrate quite nicely with your TV or even AV amplifier. And I like the fact that you could stream other things onto there. So for instance, your smart cameras or even voice control things to start up on there. It's a very impressive functionality and a good upgrade if you did own a Chromecast. I think the functionality this gives is far superior to a standard Chromecast. So there you go, I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Hang around for the end cards, I'll have some more cool tech. Drop me a like if you've liked this video and a comment to let me know what you thought of the product. If you haven't liked it, let me know why you haven't liked it. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.